It's spoiler in time, folks, and this is the show where all that hard work we do on Cord Killers, figuring out how to watch the stuff we want to watch, pays off, and we've watched it. And now we get to talk about it. This week, we'll talk about Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency and The Good Place. But first, I must introduce myself. How rude. I'm Tom Merritt, and this is my friend Brian Brushwood. Oh, hello, it's me, Brian Brushwood. But most importantly, <laughs> let's go to our third friend, the movie draft. <laughs> oh, wait, also Aww. Bryce. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Someday, Bryce. <laughs> Dude. So, what happened to Serenity? Because Halloween made $76 million for Team DTNS, and I'm not uh, complaining about that. Got us in the third place. Uh, Goosebumps only made $28 million, so now we've got $100 million. But Serenity, Team John Trucker's movie, is listed as $0. Did it not come out? Uh, let me take a look here. I'm going to do some heavy-duty research. It's called Pretending to Clickety-Clack. $76 million for open for Halloween I'm very pleased with. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Serenity movie release 2018. There you go. Uh, yeah, no, it says it came out, but I guess okay, Box so maybe Office the data Mojo or whatever has it updated. Uh, Though I will say Rotten Tomatoes now lists it as 2019. So... Ew. Oh, yeah, in theaters, January 25, 2019 is now what Rotten Tomatoes uh, says. Oh, the commission has got uh, some work to do. So it's, it's got moved, that, yeah. and it hasn't been reflected Man, in the this has been a really chaotic movie season for us. A lot of stuff yeah, has gotten really shifted has. all around. Uh, in the meantime, uh, seventy-six million dollars opening weekend for Halloween. Not bad, Sir Tom. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. The only bad thing is, is that you know, a movie like Halloween is not going to last for months. You know, people are going to stop watching it fairly soon. If after you're going to name one holiday, at which point it, its uh, interest would precipitously drop off. Well, what do you think? All that Saints would... Day. Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so at this point, for the moment, uh, I'm in number one with $192 million. Uh, Star is born, still, I don't know, barely trickling in money. Can't believe it. It got stomped by Venom. It beat Venom in the box office this weekend. Uh, this but weekend. But they were both lower. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see if A Star is Born holds on for long, whether or not it, it holds on to that sweet, sweet Oscar buzz. Uh, and I, I think A Star is Born has a chance to continue to have legs. You're just going to have to give it a couple weeks to find out. Yep. Yeah. Uh, plus, also, don't forget, in previous years, remember there there was that one year that I was dead, like it was decided Scott Johnson was going to win, and then all of a sudden Lincoln got nominated for like eight Oscars or something, yeah. and then somehow I, I I just drifted across the finish line before him. So mm -hmm. there's there's a chance of that kind of thing happening. Yeah, we'll Starsborn could be that for you. Uh, the 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 moment everyone's been waiting for is this weekend though when Johnny English strikes again comes out. Of course, we know you all have bought your tickets already, but if you haven't, get the, to the box office and buy them in advance. Tom, so you Tom, don't Tom, miss Tom, out Tom, 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 on Tom. the event of the fall. Tom, uh, it is Team DTNS's movie, but that doesn't matter when you're talking about a piece of art as significant as Johnny English strikes oh, I, again. I, I'm, I'm sorry, it's the Federal Trade Commission. They said they said you <laughs> talked a little bit quickly in that middle sentence right there. Could you back that up? Just say that one more time. <laughs> Johnny English strikes again. No, 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 uh, not uh, oh, oh, not that part. Oh, no, 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 no. The the part, the part about who owns that movie in the draft. Uh, ooh, the doc just crashed on me. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, no, best of luck with that. Uh, although it doesn't have to make a lot of money with your uh, four game dollar investment in it. No, not to, not for the dollar per dollar uh, spend for sure, and uh, I hope it makes four dollars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, get to the good place, uh, where it it followed the thing I love about it, which is we're just going to throw a twist and then confront the twist and then turn everything back around again. Uh, so this week at the at the end of last week's episode, the four. People, Chidi and, and everybody, Eleanor, uh, Tahani and Jason, all walked in and saw the door to the afterlife, which at the beginning of this episode was quickly closed. And they tried to maybe explain it away and it, it didn't work. And so they feel like, oh, crap, now we've ruined it. We've spoiled it. We told them about the afterlife. They t they ended up coming clean and 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 just told them everything that had happened, uh, n thinking that that would cause them to all just go nuts and not care since they're like, well, we're going to the bad place anyway. It doesn't matter what we do, but it had the opposite effect on three of the four. Whereas Chidi, the ethical philosopher 
actually just kind of let go and and decided that nothing mattered. Well, okay, two things. Uh, Number one, let me say in advance that I'm, of the three of us, most interested in Bryce's take on this because (laughs) Bryce was not a fan of this episode. But before you uh, destroy it for us, uh, let me tell you what I did like about it. Uh, The Good Place is at its best to me when it is constantly a set of real life uh, 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 testing of of moral ethical uh, conundrums and quandaries. And and every season they have a change of venue. In this case, we don't have a physical change of venue, but what, four four episodes in? We have a, a change of moralistic venue in that because they have spent all of this time studying uh, more moral ethics, they suddenly, all of them instantly get it where it's like, oh, wait, the mere fact of knowing this changes everything and there's nothing we can do because our motives are, are suspect from, from this point forward, which I thought was interesting. And I thought that, I thought it was really interesting that, uh, that Chidi, of course, being Chidi, when he finally does collapse the superposition and knows a thing for sure he just defaults to an established new moral philosophy of 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 nihilism where he's just like oh well now i know it's nihilism and we're done uh so i have a framework i know question answered i'm making chili with peeps in it (laughs) right right (laughs) Uh, uh i i liked it but but it sounds like i mean it has good character moments don't get me wrong i mean these are good characters and good actors giving good moments with these characters but like if it, i boiled this episode down to oh hey the thing that we were doing uh broke again so it's and, a world breaker for and, you right well it but it's like they've done that before right because it was like oh this is a good place actually this is the bad place okay we took a thing and we said oh it broke right the right. idea of like oh trying to go to the judge and 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 uh, uh appeal that didn't even work that that didn't break but it didn't it didn't work it didn't go anywhere and, right and so we're still in this like appeal and, and and trying to prove the human's worth and uh and and so because of like a fluke because of sort of happenstance the whole machine breaks again and and so for me that it's it's frustrating because it's I a little like, too well-worn territory for you right like and oh now they have to be judged now we have to see how their morals are it's like well oh, okay i need i need i need advancement of the plot i need advancement of the plot so i feel like it's 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 slow in a way that the other seasons have been slow i think season one and season two have slow middle seasons but i i feel like i I, i'm i'm i want more even more things to happen structurally so you if i if i'm reading you correctly you're saying like at this point you are ready for a decision gate like is this going somewhere because if it's not going anywhere i don't need to be spending a half hour a week watching this I think it's getting there, right? Like, is is at some point someone is going to have to judge these humans, and right. they're either going to go one way or the other, or so maybe a third way. The but. fun, the fun thing for me is that we, you know, you you never want to discover what the island is about because then the show's over, right? Right. So you never want them to actually get judged. Uh, so the fun thing for me is like, can we convincingly put it off? And it sounds like this season for you isn't convincingly putting it off. Well, this, you're like, this just feels like you're treading water mm-hmm. to get away from having to judge the humans. Yeah. Or at least sp- this specific episode when it was just mm-hmm. like, okay, no, we're going to have to do a whole new thing again. Or, or, or at least like if you, if you tell me like, okay, they broke ties are cut. Now they are living in a world where they know Then may- maybe that's something. But I, 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 do, I do feel like it is a bit, a bit of treading water, right? Like season uh, yeah, two I- introduced so many characters and new things. I'm, I'm give me the new. Give me the new. Baby. I, I liked this episode because it felt like they did it again for me, which oh. is I thought I knew where it was going. And then they showed the door and didn't have a way out of it. And so what should happen is, well, now that they know, they'll all just fall apart. But it doesn't happen, which then my my second assumption is like, ah, so they're all going to learn their lesson. But they learn it in different interesting ways. And Chidi doesn't learn it. Chidi is the one who's like, nope, I'm just going to be nihilistic. So it was interesting to me and it felt new to me because of that. If if I had a complaint, it would be that 
they were a little more on the nose in pointing out like this is a lesson in ethical philosophy to Hani and Jason were exemplifying this kind of ethical philosophy. Eleanor was exemplifying this kind and Chidi was exemplifying this kind. I, I didn't mind that horribly. It didn't ruin the episode for me. They yeah. usually are more subtle than that. Sure. Um, like and, Chidi, Chidi and, was, it was a great break from the pattern. I'll, yeah. I'll tell you and what. I kind of saw it coming pretty early that, oh, Eleanor is going to start doing the right thing despite it. And so what's going to happen is mm -hmm. they're going to believe like, oh, we can have them judged and this will actually work even better. The The obstacle to overcome is they broke the rules, but come on, judge. Look, when they actually knew they were going to be condemned, they acted good. Doesn't that prove they're good people? And I'm waiting for that expectation to be subverted now. So I don't think we've talked about this aspect of it i i've mm, i've been okay with waiting for it to be over but i've not been thrilled with the janet and michael independent show and their whole full-time job is to watch the four main characters like to me if that's what we were set up for for the rest of that 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 this whole third season uh, that would have gotten pretty old pretty fast like i enjoy their sure. interactions and all that yeah. also of all the moral philosophies, none are greater than Chidi's pecs and abs. My God, what a what a golden god that dude is. I noticed that too. And I actually read it behind the scenes somewhere that said he has always been uh, ashamed of having a shirt off. And that was actually a a kind of a hard moment for him to decide, like, okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna show myself with my shirt off, which is hilarious when you look like that, right? To think like, how could you possibly be worried <laughs> that they, you know? Yeah. It's amazing. And and they kind of I think they um didn't they they call that out too? Didn't they have Eleanor make a comment about that or something? I think she made a know. quick. Uh, oh no, uh, it was thing, a right? call back because Eleanor talks about how he looks with his shirt off in like season one, and so this is us finally getting to see it. Oh, I don't remember that. Okay, yeah. uh, but then covered with the Monday, Tuesday, Thursday wine or whatever. Oh uh, yeah, oh, uh, no, who, what, where, when, why? Oh, there you go. That's yeah, <laughs> very good. Like also, I miss all the background jokes. I'm glad that there are more like textual jokes. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that was a good day. Okay, I I do have one question for the both of you guys. The the title bit of the episode, Jeremy Barramy, out of loved five, it. loved it, loved it. Thought it was hilarious. It was the dumbest. Uh, it was it was like like and 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 just the casual like yeah, it's Jeremy Barramy. And they were like, just a coincidence. That's how it looks. I I I didn't mind it one bit, Tom. Yeah, it didn't, didn't bother me. I, I didn't love it as much as Brian, it sounds like, but also it was, you know, I was amused. It was fine. I I didn't laugh. It was, it was it was too silly for you? It was, well, it's it's like, you don't need to make a, it, I'm not learning anything from the joke, right? Like, the if the bit is, oh, the good place and the bad place are out of time, really, but let's spend like five minutes joking about being out of time. Well, I, I, I think it was like a so, science fiction trope that I didn't need a big Here's, to do about. Uh, uh, maybe maybe this will make you feel know. better about it. I think it's important to reset people's expectations here and there. And sure. in this case, you might have people deep enough midway through season three at the risk of almost taking the show seriously. And it's important to break yeah. that expectation of like, oh, you want to know what the timeline is? Here's the timeline. Looks like this middle finger right here. Why don't you yeah. quit worrying about the timeline? Maybe that. Maybe that's what my issue is that I, I want to take the good place really, really seriously. Yes, well, and you should uh, for the parts that it's doing seriously, <laughs> and remind yourself of the parts that it's not that's doing not seriously. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that's uh, that's fair, and that's kind of how I saw it. Like, oh, okay, yeah, the timeline doesn't matter. Right. You know, time runs differently, and this is a funny way of just saying eh, time runs differently. That's all you need to know, Jeremy. Bear me. Right. Right. But the judge made a new timeline that's outside of Jeremy. Oh, that, that's a good point. Yeah, no. So yeah. anything can happen now. Finally, we're at a place where anything Jeremy can happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's Earth. Earth's timeline operates differently. Jeremy Bear me is. Oh, I can't wait for the alien episodes. And the AI I would simulation love episodes. Aliens. I want aliens on the good place. Okay, yeah, yeah, look, they're already there. I'm pretty oh. sure Jason Mendoza is not legal. <laughs> no, that's not, that's not good. That's not cool. <laughs> okay, so uh, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, shall we, yes, shall we move on? We uh, shall. It's uh, episode four, season one, puzzle episode. So it's kind of self-contained. 
we learned a little lore about the background of of the the why the folks are looking for the thing and where the thing is. Uh, but really, it was just a puzzle episode where uh, Dirk, uh, you know, is leading his assistant through the puzzle and solving the puzzles while everybody helps, which is fine. I, I don't have a problem with puzzle episode. I just I don't have a lot to say about it because what I love about this show is the crazy weird world it was introducing me to. And this episode was a puzzle episode, which I think was supposed to introduce me to a deeper aspect of that world. But it, it just felt like it was filling in some lore gaps for me. Do you, do you want the part that I liked or didn't like first? Uh, didn't like first. Uh the whole puzzle thing was, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say it was garbage, but uh, there's, I'm sure there's some other word that rhymes It wasn't the best puzzle episode uh, well, I've ever seen. And, and it, I don't it, think it was the worst either, but. Yeah. I, I, okay, so so you can call out, you can call out the elements you're doing as you're doing them and make metaphors and references and all that stuff. Um, but, it, you know, it's fairly transparent. And then let's figure out a reason for them to take off their shirts. Uh, and then, uh, and also let's not call them Tesla, but base everything off of Tesla's, uh, you know, free energy grid and all that stuff. Um, also, let's. That, first by the way, side note, that strikes me as possibly a writer who didn't realize how conversant people are with Tesla these days. Because I, I see that in like 70s and 80s stuff where they're like, nobody knows who Tesla is, but I, the smart writer of the show do, so I'm gonna use that because no one will ever know. And this felt like that, but I'm like, we all we all know Tesla now. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, no, uh, in fact, actually, I think I think that's a really good point. Uh, so if I recategorize it as just a miscalculation as to how overexposed in my perception it is um also dumb dumb production note and it's this is a dumb thing for me to obsess over um but everything's all 1920s technology and then suddenly there's a bunch of uh, uh, 16 by 9 lcd screens with logos on it I had a yeah, real problem with that technology yes yes uh, had a real problem with that um uh, but again that's nobody's fault uh you want to know what i loved and I am sincerely convinced of this. Uh, I know that Max Landis has appeared on Red Letter Media's shows. Mm -hmm. I know he is hip to all the stuff they do. And I know he knew all their work before writing this. I am utterly convinced that the flat written direction was for the bad guy to sound and talk exactly like Mr. Plinkett up until that moment that he assumes his rock star persona again. Uh, it is too on the nose for me to believe for even once. In fact, I am no, certain somebody's right. writing us at cordkillers at gmail.com saying, yes, he already admitted as such. Here's a link to the exact moment that he says it. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all. You're right. You're, you're absolutely right. It is Plinkett. That's that's what he sounded like. I but, uh, hadn't and, really put it together. And also how he acts. <laughs> like like yeah. he's like, no, you can come with me. You gotta come around to the basements. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so what did you like? Uh, the Plinkett part. <laughs> that's, oh, well, that's the part you liked. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, but but also I liked uh, I liked um, uh, Proto's sister not being a cartoon uh, so much and like. That brief moment that she, you know, she's aware enough of her medical condition that she's like, I think I'm about to have an episode or like, oh, no, 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 you're definitely smelling an actual fire. There was a lot of other stuff that was sort of, um, I don't know, just on, on the nose. I, 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 this felt like important connective tissue, not quite table setting, but, you know, like, OK, I guess we're moving. But I, I have a feeling that there's something real interesting right around the corner. We get the we get the extra question of what the dudes are sucking the so the, the 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 weird like like breath raping that they do uh, that that in one case was good for Frodo's sister but bad for Dark Gently. I don't know. Yeah, I wish I cared more about the the lore uh, about the 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 ancient one who who created the experiments. It, it all feels like vaguely like Tesla meets Lovecraft, which I would normally love. But to be honest, I'm like, oh, I don't want to have to pay attention to that. I did. I just want to watch Dirk be crazy. And uh, we didn't even get the assassin uh, this week who who's fast to become one of uh, like my oh, second she's favorite the best. in the whole show. Yeah. Well, and plus also like understanding why her vassal uh, has pledged allegiance to her, you know, in a weird uh, mirror image of 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 Dirk and Frodo. Um, the uh, I also liked the flat discursive way 
that uh, Mr. Plinkett explains like, uh, well, it was a gizmo from the 60s and swapped bodies. It was pretty great. And we did it a lot. And then this happened. And then this happened. And then I, I don't know. Uh, I enjoyed all of that. Yep. Well, uh, we will continue to watch it. I'm looking forward to the next episode, no matter what. And uh, thanks for watching along with us, folks. Uh, you can get these episodes a little earlier. You know what? You don't have to stick around and wait like everybody else. What are you doing? Get to patreon.com slash cord killers. And it costs a dollar. Like, yeah. People leave dollars on the sidewalk. You know what? Here, Pick I'm gonna one leave up, a dollar. give it to I'm, us. Here. You get the show early. I'm not going to say where I'm going to put it, but I'm going to put a dollar somewhere. And when you find it, and you will find it, please give it back to me. Thank you. It might Thank be you. hiding in your bank account right now. You're going to have to look around for yourself. <laughs> Just take a look. Just Patreon.com slash cord killer. Serial number 1Z0676798 AA36. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>